Well, good afternoon, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report without you guys, as well as you ladies. You know that this literally does not work. There's no time to cry over the loss to the Miami Dolphins, although I will say I feel better uh, knowing that the Eagles barely got by um, the the, uh, uh, Giants yesterday, and seeing the San Francisco 49ers lose with the four interceptions, I know they were tip passes, but somehow their tip passes always seem to be not the quarterback's fault, except when Dak Prescott has them, happened to him, but be that as it may. We actually have a problem, or should I say Micah Parsons has a problem. Now, I don't know this to be a fact. I don't know this to be a fact, but this is what I believe. The NFL is about the shield and the perception that everything is perfect, you know, that the football is a gentleman's sport and that they care about all the causes and everything else like that. They don't like anything that puts a bad light on the NFL. Things can happen behind the scenes that you don't know are happening because it's about sending a message. The NFL does not like people that rock the boat. And herein lies the problem with Micah Parsons. Micah Parsons is getting away with a lot more where the NFL is caught between a rock and a hard place. My belief is the NFL does not like Micah Parsons having a podcast where he puts the laundry out on it. For example, when Micah Parsons questions how a team keeps Daniel Jones out there knowing that he's getting molly whopped, that doesn't look good. It makes people think, oh, okay. When Micah Parsons, you know, talks about how a coach is being treated, the NFL does not like that. And Micah Parsons has been talking about being held for ever forever the nfl does not like that and unfortunately the nfl is not going to change what they're doing with micah parsons saying i'm being held we all see it everybody and their sister knows it and the nfl is not going to turn around and say hey you need to make those calls if anything they're subtly sending a message to micah parsons that the more you whine about this the less you're going to get them because you're not seeing them. There is no way in holy hell that the best pass rusher out there is not being held by people, that people are just blocking him straight up and not doing anything to him. We can all see, even people who aren't Dallas Cowboy fans can see the same thing. And then to turn around and a ticky-tack calls where you are sending a message to him, you're not getting any breaks. I want to play Micah Parsons after the game because, see, this is where you realize that you're fighting City Hall and you can't win against City Hall, or should I say against the NFL. Listen to Micah after the game. Um, you know, it's super tough. I just feel like we're good enough to get a stop, you know. It's tough. Third and two, obviously they're going to try to attack what they think is a weakness. What's your thoughts on that third and two just before the kneel downs? Um, I mean, honestly, is, are you saying our weakness is the run? Well, that's what they assume based on what happened last week against Buffalo. So. I mean, I wouldn't say they attacked the weakness. I mean, I feel like the majority of the game we shut down the run, had a lot of TFLs, had a lot of success. So I wouldn't say the weakness, but if you're talking about situational football and game football and IQ, why wouldn't you run it on third and two and you're in already in field goal position? So, I mean, I wouldn't say that's the weakness mm-hmm. at all. I think we stopped the run pretty well um, and did what we were supposed to do. How did you think you did against two overall? I thought we did good. I don't think we really gave up anything big. We They scored one time, a lot of field goals. I mean, they coming into the game, I think everybody knew they were going to get some big plays, some big opportunities with the weapons they have. And I thought we did a great job containing them. You mentioned a good thing you guys did in five field goals that you hold the number one offense in the league to and just kind of quantify the frustration of not coming out with the win after that kind of performance. Same thing with the Eagles. Same thing now. It's a game of inches. Games are decided by one or two plays. Um, that's the league win. It's hard to win. Um, they won the turnover battle. Um, 
So, you know, I, I think uh, as a defense, we take accountability because we pride ourselves in getting the ball back, and uh, we didn't do a good enough job at that. Can you pinpoint the road issues? I mean, you have one on the road, but of late, there's been some struggles with Buffalo and today. I mean, we fight, we fighting with our back against the wall. I, a lot of penalties, I mean, it, it's mind-blowing, the things that's getting called and the positions we get put in. I mm. mean, the thing is, um, we just got to learn how to fight the adversity. I know a lot of this BS and we're like, this is football plays and these is, but it's the world we live in. We got to start in the helmet. You hit two on the back. What did the ref say to you on that call? He said, I mean, anybody who's watching, I mean, I won so quick. Like, I, how am I supposed to know he got the ball out? I mean, it's within a second. I didn't leave my feet. I didn't leave with my head. So mm -hmm. I don't know what a rough and the passer is anymore. He said, I could have done something in some manner to avoid him. But in reality, I ran into D-Law. Like, we both met the quarterback. I mean, like I said, it's just hard to play defense. Is that play Aren't you more supposed frustrating? to have a step anyway in those instances? Aren't you supposed yeah. to at least have one? He said I, my intent was to punish the quarterback, but how am I trying to punish him if I'm just trying to sack him? I mean, it's not like it's a late hit. It's not like I'm leaving my feet. I didn't leave with my head. Um, I don't know how you make that call. I don't see no justification. Was, he said I just try to punish him. and I. I haven't got a rough in the past all year. What what do I have against Tua to even try to hurt Tua or anything? I'm just trying to get a sack. I mean, I'm I'm one mm -hmm. clean. Is that is that kind of play more frustrating on the ones that aren't getting called the holdings against you? Yeah, I think that's that's frustrating in itself. I mean, it's like I can't get a call, but I get things called on me, you know. So obviously they looking. They just don't care what they call, you know, mm -hmm. as long as it's just not with us. But then at the end of the day, I mean, we just got to win these type of games. You guys have had a rebound from losses in the past. Now back to back, it's kind of stacked. Now, how do you kind of take this approach into Detroit next week? Another really good team. Yeah, you know, we just gotta come and bring our best. Um, we're back at home. We got a great opportunity to win at home um, and get back in the swing of things. But in reality, uh, we just gotta we just gotta get another win, and we just gotta win. Uh, I hate losing. I hate this feeling. Um, I know we're such a better team. Um, and it's just it's frustrating when it's not when the results and what you know doesn't show. In the playoffs around the corner, what would give you confidence in going on the road and picking up the win? There's no one that can give me more confidence than the guys in this room. Um, we just need guys to buy in, own in on what we want to do, confine the details, trust one another, because uh, you know that's the you know that's the only thing that matters is the guys in this room, this mm -hmm. locker room, and without them, I mean. I can't go anywhere. We can't go anywhere. To, you know, to, we got. We just got to buy in everybody. How demoralizing was that final drive? You know, you guys needed to get them out the field and couldn't get them out the field. How tough was that? You know, it's super demoralizing. I just feel like we're good enough to get a stop, and we didn't get a stop. I mean, we got gashed. I mean, we gave up plays. It's tough. I mean, I can. It's tough for sure. And it'll be interesting to see what he says on his podcast, um, if that's tonight, I think it'll be, um, instead of the typical Monday night since it was Christmas. Um, but Micah is, he's right up there on the abyss, you know, stepping off of there where the NFL is going to start finding him. But see, they don't want to find him because then it looks like they're petty. The thing is, you can send a message without actually looking like you're sending a message. That's where you can kind of say, listen, turn a blind eye. Turn a blind eye. Don't let them get the calls. And you can say that I'm crazy all you want. I still believe that all of this stuff goes back to a vendetta against the Dallas Cowboys with a message that was sent to Jerry Jones. You cannot tell me that in 2017, when Jerry Jones was going to the mat for Zeke Elliott because of the NFL going after him, and do you remember Jerry Jones going through there and saying, hold up for a minute about redoing the contract for Roger Goodell and wanting to put uh, Gil Brandt was it no i'm sorry it wasn't gilbert i can't remember who it was but basically wanting to install his own patsy to be the nfl commissioner and you'll remember 
where the NFL said, Jerry, you're going to be paying the $2 million legal fees. And Jerry Jones said, <laughs> you know what? We got the best attorneys in the world. We going to fight this thing and we going to win. And he went up to New York. I would have liked to have been a fly on the wall because Jerry came out of that meeting and basically said, we're just going to pay the fine here. We're just going to pay for it and left. You can't tell me that Roger Goodell didn't have in his back pocket and said, Jerry, I got three quarters of the NFL owners that say we can take your team. We don't want to. But you're going to pay this fine, and we're going to let this thing go. I don't have any evidence of that. But for Jerry Jones, a man who is always used to getting his way to turn tail and run, it had to be something like that to get him to change his mind. And with Micah Parsons weekly putting the NFL on blast, he's getting the message of, you better act right, son. You better act right. Yeah. The NFL is sending Micah Parsons a message. All right, good people. Got some work to do in the workshop. We'll keep you up to speed. Later on, we'll be talking about A.J. Brown. A.J. Brown is getting no love in Philadelphia right now. He's being called a whiny little biatch. Um, I have a video of Michael Irving that was... Oh, shit. Fuck. Damn. Ow. That hurt. <laughs> Damn. Fucking wind. Ow.